uh, for a great introduction uh, and I'm really excited here today to uh, tell you a little bit about my research uh, with surface plasma resonance imaging uh, where we utilize the uh, advantages of uh, quantum dots uh, to enhance the sensitivity. Uh, I am currently the business development manager for life sciences and also the SPRI product manager at uh, Horiba Scientific and I'm also an adjunct assistant professor at University of North Carolina in Greensboro. The majority of the work that I'm going to be presenting here today has been done uh, during my uh, professorship at UNCG and also my postdoctoral studies at uh, McGill University in Montreal. I would like to before I start also give credit to all the people who helped me with this research uh, my students and also uh, my colleagues. I would like to recognize uh, their hard work uh, in getting these uh, really interesting uh, projects going and being successful. Surface plasma resonance is a powerful technique to measure biomolecular interactions in real time in a label-free environment. At a given angle, the excitation of surface plasma takes place resulting in reduced intensity of the reflected light due to the resonance energy transfer between evanescent wave and surface plasma. The photons are, con are then converted to plasma causing a dip in the reflected light intensity as shown here to your right. Now at the angle theta 2 at which the resonance occur is extremely sensitive to any change in the refractive index of the medium adjacent to the metal surface and such changes can be monitored by recording the intensity of the reflected light when the system goes out of resonance. During an SPR experiment one of the interactants is immobilized to the sensor surface. The other are free in solution and are passed over the surface. Association and dissociation is, me is measured in arbitrary units and displayed in a graph called the sensogram. Biomolecular interna interaction analysis is not limited to proteins. You can measure, for example, DNA-DNA interactions, DNA protein, lipid protein, and hybrid systems of biomolecules and non-biological cells for surfaces can be also investigated. Inherently, you can get the full kinetic profile of the two interactants including the equilibrium dissociation constant. In my research I use a system that is based on an imaging platform. Basically the reflected light is captured by a CCD camera which allows you to visualize the whole biochip and allows you also to set up your experiment in an array format. You can, uh, you can uh, look at for example 400 interactions uh, simultaneously. In conjunction, you will have also a sensogram uh, that displays the change, percent change in reflectivity over time. So inherently, when something binds to the surface, the spots the, where, where binding occurs or the region of interest where binding occurs, uh, you will see the uh, change in contrast. Basically, uh, the spots will be lighting up. And also, you will see a change in the uh, ref uh, sensogram where you see an increase. Uh, of percent change reflectivity. So this is basically how uh, SPRI uh, works that you're able to immobilize different different types of ligand on the surface and each ligand is considered a region of interest and each region of interest is measured simultaneously allowing you to measure multiple uh, ligand interactions uh, at a time. Since the molecular changes that occur during tumor development uh, can take place over a number of years, biomarkers potentially can be used to detect cancers early, determine prognosis, and monitor disease progression and therapeutic response. Detecting any disease early, including cancer, is very important because it usually means more opportunities for different interventions and therapies, with increased potential for improving patient survival and quality of life. Now for a biomarker to be clinically useful, analytical method must be, able, must be a, available that allow reliable measurement optimally with capability for high throughput tests, prompt turnaround time, and reasonable cost. Current immunoassays measure protein at concentrations above 10 to the minus 12 molar. 
whereas the concentration of the majority of proteins important in cancer and neurological disorders and the early stages of infection are thought to circulate in a range between 10 to the minus 16 to the 10 to the minus 12 molar. Mind you, this is a mid of C, a mid of a C of other biomolecules. Our project goal is to extend the application of surface plasma resonance imaging system in detecting biomarkers in serum at ultra low levels. There are two established techniques for biomarker detection with SPRI. One is a label free method where you directly detect the analyte. However, if your analyte concentration falls below the limits of detection of the instrument, you need to resort to a sandwich type assay in order to amplify the SPRI signal. Here's an example where they use gold nanoparticles tagged to detection antibodies and the amplification occurred as a result of the coupling between the localized surface plasma resonance that is, uh, uh, that is present on the surface of the gold nanoparticle and the propagating surface plasma resonance on the gold uh, surface. So this type of uh, coupling ends up enhancing uh, the SPRI signal. Observing there was a lot of work uh, focusing on using gold nanoparticles for SPR signal enhancement, I became very curious what would happen if we introduced quantum dots as a SPR signal amplifier. The reason I chose quantum dots is because I've been working with them for a long time and early on in my research career I realized they like to communicate with their neighbors. Now let me take a moment to explain to you what are quantum dots. Quantum dots are a special class of semiconductors which range from 2 to 10 nanometers in diameter. Because of their unusually high surface to volume ratios, quantum dots display unique optical and electrical properties that are different in character to those of the corresponding bulk material. The most apparent of these is the emission of photons under excitation which are visible to the human eye as light. Moreover, the wavelength of these photon emission depends not on the material from which the quantum dot is made, but rather its size. I will introduce uh, in, to you my early work uh, with the SPRI platform. Here I collaborated with Drs. Malik and Tabrizian and we investigated if quantum dots can enhance the SPRI signal. Here is the design of our platform. We deposited silylated single-stranded DNA onto the gold surface followed by adding haptadecafluoro one decane thiol, it's a mouthful, as a blocking molecule and then introduce a biotinylated uh, comp uh, complementary DNA strand where the concentration was 50 nanomolar. We chose this concentration because that was the range we can detect comfortably with SPRI. We observed a 2.5% change in left of D after the addition of uh, the, the complementary DNA strand However, after the introduction of the quantum dots, we saw a 10-fold uh, signal enhancement as shown to your right. So, Next, uh, this figure shows the um, SPRI binding kinetic for various concentrations of biotinylated DNA target sequence. The target was injected into the flow cell for 8 minutes, followed by a buffer wash and a 10-minute incubation with 5 nanomolar streptoavidin coated quantum dots. The corresponding concentration gradient is plotted where each form represents the average value of the reflectivity difference between initial and buffer injections calculated from three SPRI kinetic curve for each concentration. For comparison, the concentration gradient curve is plotted for DNA hybridization assay without the amplification step. The limit of detection without the amplification step lies uh, between 1 to 10 nanomoles for single-stranded DNA complementary circ sequence. Conversely, using the uh, quantum dot uh, amplification strategy, an improvement of more than six orders of magnitude in limited detection and 25-fold signal enhancement is obtained. Uh, the minimum detectable uh, DNA concentration corresponded to 100 femtomolar after an 8-minute hybridization reaction time. In addition, quantum dot provide the means without any additional surface treatment to combine SPRI technology uh, with fluorescent uh, imaging. And as you can see here, you have 3D images of the DNA sandwich as a biochip were reconstructed from Z-sectional images 
and were loaded into the Imara 6.3.1 imaging software uh, program. Then we wanted to assess if quantum dot uh, enhancement as spiroid detection can occur with prostate-specific antigen, more of a clinically relevant biomarker. And the biosensor interface was functionalized with a mixture of um, cellulated PEG with carboxylated terminal group and OH group. Uh, the, uh, the, the complex uh, in serum was injecting, uh, the PSA complex was injected in serum into the flow cell and allowed to bind uh, with the cellulated uh, PEG-COH uh, antibody pre-functionalized surface, followed by a five-minute amplification step using 20 micrograms of uh, detection uh, antibody. So basically here, uh, as you can see to your left, we injected 2.5 nanograms per ml of PSA ACT in spiked serum, and then uh, we added the uh, biotimulated uh, uh, detection antibody, and then we added the um, streptoavidin quantum dot. So on the surface we had already a, an antibody that binds to PSA, and after we injected the PSA bound to that uh, antibody on the, the ligand, and then we injected the detection antibody that's been biotinylated, and the reason we biotinylated that because the quantum dots have stuff to have it in on the surface so we can enhance the signal. And so we saw a signal enhancement, however we didn't see as large a as, uh, signal enhancement as we saw in buffer. And uh, so after I started then, at that time I started my, uh, my professorship and uh, we wanted to um, um, and we want to see if we can enhance uh, the uh, signal enhancement uh, in, in really in a clinical environment. Before I move to the next slide, I just want to point out um, the slide that just popped up at the bottom. It's basically images collected over time as we did the experiment. So you can see at time zero we had nothing binding to the surface. Around time 12, and this is if you look at the sensogram, this is the binding of the antigen to the surface. And then you see the removal of the uh, non-specific interaction after we add a some kind of detergent to remove any type of non-specific interactions and we, I would like to specify that the signal enhancement that you see even on the control surface is mainly due to change in the refractive index between the buffer and the spiked serum that we inject and so that normally goes, goes back down and then when we add the detection antibody you see that it's only binding to the target uh, uh, spots and the control spots you see no binding and then when we add the quantum dots you see more binding occurring to the spots and you can see signal uh, the intensity in, uh, increasing. So here uh, also um, we looked at uh, why we are seeing such a great signal enhancement with these uh, 800 nanometer quantum dot and uh, we so we tried to use different size quantum dot to see okay if we have a different size then we should see a difference in the signal enhancement so the smaller size and is this is this only a mass loading effect or is there something else going on and clearly when you look at the smaller quantum dot so for looking at the 525 nanometer uh, you can see the signal uh, increase is very very low in comparison to the 800 nanometer However, when you look at the 780 nanometer quantum dot and 800 nanometer, which have very similar, which are very close in size, however, their signal enhancement are, are marginally different. You would think it would be a little bit higher, but they're a little bit different. So there's something else going on, and, and why the question is why 800 nanometer uh, is really the most uh, effective enhancer than the other ones. Uh, it's something that we are still trying uh, to draw conclusions or propose hypotheses why uh, this is happening. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, during uh, when I started my professorship, I wanted to see if we can really improve the signal enhancement in more clinical environments such as in serum or plasma. And then I started looking at uh, you know, looking at how we can modify the surface so we can um, 
uh, be able to uh, measure uh, stronger or lower amount of uh, protein. And so I looked at aptamers, and aptamers are synthetic DNA, RNA, or peptide. And uh, one of the th key things that attracted me to aptamers is their size. They're much smaller in size than antibodies. So that means then uh, the, the analyte, when you inject, is going to be closer to the sensor surface, but also um, the quantum dot that is going to be closer to the sensor surface, and which inherently will cause uh, the signal to amplify stronger. In addition, uh, they have uh, aptamers have a long shelf life and higher specificity and uh, affinity. CRP is a general inflammatory biomarker, so as a, we used it as a model uh, biomarker. And it's useful in diagnosing inflammatory responses in cancer and cardiovascular diseases and neurological uh, disorders. Uh, and the reason we used it here is basically to show that we can uh, detect at very low levels the presence of proteins uh, in serum. Now, with the flexibility of aptamer technology, we can easily swap the aptamer for our biomarker of choice and to be integrated into our uh, platform. Given the wide variation in molecular properties, for example, the detection of protein versus DNA or in buffer or serum require different approaches in order to achieve the desired response. The general goal of the mobilization procedure is the attachment of the capture body molecule to the sensor surface. Most immobilization techniques involve the first layer of a chemical linker directly bound to the gold, allowing subsequent anchoring of molecules of interest. The overall goal is to engineer a support con construct that provides large degree of accessibility to the target analyte while retaining good stability and minimizing capture probe detachment. After choosing uh, the immobilization method, several parameters need to be optimized, such as buffer strength, pH, activation time, and ligand concentration. As shown here, you can directly bind your capture probe for the case of DNA, or the mo most favorable method is the use of self-assembled monolayers on the gold surface, which increases the degrees of freedom of the probe and consequently those of binding target molecules. A self-assembled monolayer is created as a foundation of the array comprising alkane tiles contained terminated amine, hydroxylic or carboxylic functional group. After the formation of the tilelayer layer, many immobilization chemistries can be performed. A general rule that all types of non-specific binding to the surface must be kept as low as possible to prevent irrelevant signals interfering with the interpretation of the specific interaction. The use of blocking agent prevents non-specific uh, adsorption. A variety of chemical strategies have been reported for the SPRI-based uh, sensing. We found that majority of the time people are resorting to, if you're working in a uh, serum or plasma peg works the best and depending on your ligand you might find other blocky molecules would be uh, uh, useful. I will now describe to you uh, a general workflow for our experiments. Uh, first we, we, we UV ozone our clean biochip and then microwave uh, assisted chemical linker immobilization and then deposit the aptamers on the sensor chip using SPRI arrayer. Then we block our surface with a blocking agent inside the uh, open uh, the uh, SPRI instrument uh, from Horiba. And I, I currently had in my lab uh, the the earlier version of the new OpenPlex uh, platform, which we are uh, offering now. Um, We have investigated various immobilization methods because we are working in a complex environment. We chose extra avidin as a direct chemical linker to the capture probe in order to take advantage of a strong binding uh, affinity to biotinylated probes, as well as superior anti-fouling properties against human serum proteins. 
As shown, the first layer involves the formation of cystamine, which takes about two hours incubation, and then activated for one hour by glutaraldehyde, where the aldehyde groups of the glutaraldehyde can bind to the amino groups of the extra avidin. The last results uh, results with one hours of incubation. And I forgot to mention that between each step we rinse our chip and dry with nitrogen. Finally, your chip is then is ready uh, for the aftermer uh, deposition. Over the last decade, microwave irradiation has become an alternative to conventional methods in organic synthesis and coating of nanomaterials, offering enhanced speed, reproducibility, scalability, uh, um, and microwave irrid irradiation utilizes the ability to have electric charges present in, in liquid or conducting ion to transform electromagnetic energy into heat, resulting in reaction rate acceleration. I would like to point out that microwave photon is not sufficient and energetic to break or form bonds, but has an effect on rather the rotation of the molecules. We went ahead and compared the conventional method of chemical linker modification with microwave-assisted surface functionalization of cystamine glutaraldehyde to assess their influence on the binding interaction between the capture and target molecules. In our lab, uh, we, have a, uh, we had a CM discovered lab mate as shown here. The method we established was a microwave system chemical linker mobilization reduced the process from 4 hours to 15 minutes. Next, we wanted to compare their performances. We deposited on the chip of CRP specific aptamers uh, and a control specific uh, aptamer that does not bind to the CRP. After injection of CRP under buffer condition, the change in reflectivity was about 1.3%. However, performing the same test on the microwave treated chip, we saw a greater amount of CRP binding to the chip. Not only did the microwave decrease the procedure time, but also increased the performance of the sensor and it was easier uh, to reproduce. We next examined two different immobilization methods for the aptamer. The one to your left involves the addition to an amina aminated aptamer to systemic glutaraldehyde surface versus the addition of biotinylated aptamer to systemic glutaraldehyde and extravagant coated surface. We compared the blocking agents between PEG and bovi bovine serum albumin. And as you can see, um, the PEG provided nonspecific binding, uh, but also allowed for the aptamer to bind more efficiently uh, 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 to CRP. So it reduced this non-specific binding and allowed more of the in specific interaction uh, to occur. Similarly, we saw the same response even when we used biotinylated aptamers. As you can see here, uh, less non-specific binding and more specific binding of, uh, of CRP. So here's the final uh, setup of our nano apta sensor. Uh, our surface is coated with systemic glutaraldehyde extra avidin, and then biotinylated aptamer specific to CRP is chemically functionalized through the binding between avidin and, and biotin. The surface is blocked with thiolated PEG followed by the injection of CRP in spiked human serum. So uh, nano enhancers are basically um, is, is, a, is a nanoparticle that it are coated with a uh, detection molecule, whether it's an antibody or a um, an aptamer. So after we inject CRP spiked in human serum, we follow uh, with the injection of the nano enhancers to distinguish between the binding of CRP to the CRP specific aptamer and not to the uh, control uh, aptamer. Sorry, uh, and the um, difference image helps uh, further uh, validate the binding interaction between aptamer CRP and nano enhancer. To further investigate the reliability of the biosensor in distinguishing different amounts of C-reactive protein present in human serum, we assess the sensor, surf sensor performance with a range of C-reactive protein concentrations. A decrease in SPRI signal was observed as the amount of CRP spiked in human serum was lowered. 
The corresponding concentration uh, gradient is plotted where each form represents the average value of reflectivity difference between initial and final buffer injection calculated from three SPRI kinetic curve for each concentration. For comparison, the concentration gradient curve is also plotted for the control aptamer after injection of nano enhancers. Uh, the limit of detection uh, was valid to be 5 femtograms per ml. In this, this is in agreement with the uh, limit of detection having threefold higher response uh, than the control. When taken into consideration, uh, the standard uh, error. These results uh, are encouraging and show promise in extending the platform detecting an array of biomarkers in uh, complex biological fluids that are indicative and even predictive of disease onset and disease uh, pro uh, progression. And uh, so basically the uh, sensitivity we got to go down to 45 times 10 to the minus 18 molar. The next project we looked at to see if we can detect multiple uh, biomarkers simultaneously. And the clinical assessment of multiple organ dysfunctions at early stages is recognized to be an important factor in prompting def definitive, definitive treatment decisions that prevent irreversible organ damage. Uh, we decided to um, assess uh, the detection of two uh, biomarkers for organ injury and they are high mobility group box 1 which has a prognostic value in acute liver disease and kidney injury molecule 1 which has a uh, which is used for acute uh, renal uh, failure setup of the platform uh, for this we have coated the surface uh, of the gold the gold surface uh, with protein a coating uh, and then we immobilize the monoclonal antibody and then we use the two different blocking molecules uh, peg and bsa and then we injected the analyte and then to neutralize uh, unreacted uh, 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 protein A, we added FC injection. And then we added the biotin the detection antibody for each uh, uh, analyte. And then you'll see uh, we inject the nano enhancers to enhance the signal. We've done an experiment where we just want to verify that we really can uh, detect the enhancement of uh, HMGB1 alone. And you can see here uh, the uh, we injected different concentration of HMGB1 and then injected the uh, detection antibody followed by the quantum dot. And then you can see that the signal is increasing uh, as you increase the concentration of the uh, analyte. The limit of detection for this was 5 picograms per ml. Uh, the limit of detection here also was 5 picograms per ml for K. So in this experiment, uh, what we've done is we injected um, a constant, a mixture of the KIM-1 and HMGB-1. So we added 50 nanograms of KIM-1 and 0.5 nanograms of HMGB-1. And we also uh, in added in there interleukin-6, which is a control. And on the surface, we had antibodies that are specific for KIM-1 and antibodies that are specific to HMGB-1. And then also we had control antibodies. Uh, and you can see after we added the uh, nanoparticles or the nano enhancers, you can see the, the you can highlight the presence of each uh, molecule uh, or, or biomarker simultaneously. And you can see that the enhancement is directly correlated to the concentration of the biomarker present uh, in the mixture. So this clearly shows that you can do what we call multiplexing, the ability to uh, detect multiple uh, analytes uh, simultaneously. The last project, we looked at small molecules uh, detection. Small molecules can have a variety of biological functions serving as cell signaling molecules as drugs in medicine, as pesticide in farming, they may have a beneficial effect against a disease or may be detrimental, may also be used as research tools uh, to probe biological function as well as leads in the development of new therapeutic agents. Some can inhibit a specific function of a multifunctional protein or disrupt protein-protein interactions. These compounds can be natural or artificial 
uh, equal to or less than to 900 Daltons. For example, uh, steroid hormones are a family of small hydrophobic analytes derived from cholesterol that have been the target of many clinical assays from a variety of bodily fluids at very low uh, concentrations. Our project goal is to develop an SPRI biosensor that can detect steroid specific at ultra sensitivity along with really good uh, reproducibility. One thing that I'd like to point out is the ultra sensitive detection of, proge of progesterone is important because it can serve in enhancing the fertility uh, investigations. So current uh, immune methods that are used, uh, such as uh, ELISA or electrophoresis chemicals and detection and non-competitive idiometric or fluoro fluoroimmunoassays have been the most widely used uh, for the detection of progesterone in really uh, different matrices. Uh, these tests require very careful controlled procedures, skilled experts to carry out the analysis, and labeled probes to detect the steroid. However, the major drawback of these clinical tests is high levels of interference uh, coming from the structural similarities of different steroid hormones. A great example is progesterone and estrogen. You can see they're very similar uh, in structure. Only one side group uh, difference. Now, for this study, uh, we decided to use uh, aptamers as uh, ligand. However, uh, we could not purchase uh, any aptamers for progesterone. So we purchased a, a kit that helps you develop an aptamer for a desired target. And we purchased this from Mbiotech. And uh, basically, you're able to perform a selection of aptamers up to three target. And after you do the uh, selection, you get a... a, a uh, a range of candidate aptamers that have strong affinity or uh, to your uh, target, and so from that, uh, from that, uh, basically you're able to um, by using the SPRI, you're able to put all the candidate on one chip and inject your analyte and be able to assess which one works uh, really well as a capture uh, uh, ligand and which one is a good detection uh, ligand. And from this, uh, we saw that aptamer uh, um, 3, 4, and 5 uh, had the strongest uh, signal uh, binding to the uh, progesterone. And then uh, the concentration here, the concentration profile of the direct detection of progesterone is shown uh, with a limit of detection of 15.75 micrograms per ml. And in this uh, particular, we found that Aptamer 5 worked really well uh, as the capture uh, ligand. And then we wanted to assess the specificity uh, of this uh, platform, and so we injected estradiol and saw and looked whether estradiol. And sure enough, uh, these Aptamers were very specific to progesterone and did not bind uh, to beta estradiol. So the way this, uh, with the nano enhancement, what we did is we, div we identified that aptamer 4 is a good detection aptamer, and we bound that to the quantum dots. And then uh, we immobilized aptamer 5 as the, uh, as the capture uh, ap ligand. And then we injected the progesterone, and then we enhanced the signal with an injection, uh, sequential injection of the nano enhancers. And by using nano enhancers, uh, we were able to achieve a limit of detection of one nanomolar, uh, and the, uh, which is also equal to uh, 0.315 uh, nanograms per mL. So we were very excited uh, with these uh, results. Um, so clearly, uh, all these examples that I've presented to you today show you that the, uh, the nano enhancers uh, can be, it's a universal approach, and you can uh, use it to detect things that you cannot possibly do uh, just by using uh, the instrument uh, alone. And um, 
As I mentioned earlier, uh, in this re the research presented here, uh, we used the OpenFlex uh, platform, which is uh, a manual system, uh, but we also offer a fully automated system that allows you to uh, load up your experiment uh, settings and walk away uh, from the instrument. In addition, we offer different type of spotting systems. We have fully automated ones and we have manual ones. Uh, you can also spot up to 400 ligands on one chip and look at the interactions simultaneously. Uh, the, we offer a wide range of biosensors or ready functionalized chips that allow you to directly immobilize your ligand uh, without having to worry to do your own surface chemistry. And, and we have a wide range of SPRI reagents that you can purchase directly from us. And each dedicated instrument comes with its own dedicated software, and also we include the scrubber gen as your for your full uh, data analysis. Well, I thank you so much uh, for. Finally, I want to acknowledge uh, the people that helped me uh, in getting these uh, interesting results uh, for the work for the C-reactive protein and for the. Uh, this was done by uh, Stephen Vance and also for the uh, multiplex detection and for the progesterone that was done by Dr. Uh, Fad Zaidan and also Dr. Fins Henrich and Mr. Nuka uh, Shivaji uh, at the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar. And at this point, I'll be uh, happy to take any questions uh, from the audience. Thank you.